very shy and quiet. They say long ago there was a woman that he loved very much. But because of his shyness, he could never speak to her. They say one day he had prayed to the Creator, asking if there was a way he could capture the attention of this woman. One night, the Creator came to him told him to go south of his village to an old willow tree and create these round hoops. And through these hoops, create a dance that would show her all the beauties of life that surrounded her and how all these things are connected to form the world we live in. At the end of the dance, it captured the heart of the woman. This is the story of life and creation. The Hoop Dance. Oh, no, 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 no,
of years old, born in the village of the Taos. For a young man's dream, through this style of dance, our older people use hoops, creating images, showing respect to all living life. Some of our older people, they say that originally this was a very old dance of courtship, that the very first hoop used represented being born into the world, that throughout the dance, images of land, sky, Water, animals, birds, bear, elk, deer, horse, tree, flower, turtle, an eagle's nest, even the formation of a snake into a ladder are created. Here to my right, this adobe home structure dwelling. But this is the way it would have looked where this dance was born hundreds of years ago. People lived in homes very similar to this here. Looking upon the top, you will notice a large wooden ladder, one of the formations in the middle of the hoop dance. Traditionally, where the Pueblo villages are, Taos Pueblo village is noted to be the only homes of the three stories. The old ones talk about the four directions of life, but in Pueblo teaching, the old ones speak of the six directions. Under the kivas of the earth, the old ones use the ladder as a portal from earth to the space and universe above them, representing the six realms. For myself, my name is Gary Whiskey. I'm a yuk. I come from a family known as the Chief Burnett. But no say Kio Komikwa family. Originally my family's from the Great Lakes region of the United States, the region most of you know as Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, and northern Indiana. Our tribe was at the center of most battles taking place between the French, British, and the Americans. Eventually, in the center of the region of the Great Lakes, our families were all relocated to Kansas. We are one of four federal tribes known as the Prairie Band, Potawatomi Indian Reservation, where family tribe today reside. Back there behind you, uh, for those of you a little interested, you will see a few photographs back there documented through the Smithsonian Museum and the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. In those photographs are all pictures of my family, my father, grandfather, my great-grandparents, and my grandmothers back home on the reservation where they lived. My grandparents, every single one of them, very well noted, documented chiefs and leaders in American history during the shaping of the United States. The feathers that you are looking at here on stage, the visual of the American Indian, these are eagle feathers. Eagle feathers in the United States are very regulated. They're extremely illegal. You're not allowed to sell these feathers. You're not allowed to buy them. They are protected by the federal government under jurisdiction of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Today, ever caught selling or buying these feathers on the black market, you can actually go to federal prison for a very long time. American Indians 
have used them for thousands of years as a form of prayer, like antennas reaching up to the heavens above from native Alaskan communities all the way down to the tip of South America and Mexico. The feathers were the antennas reaching up to the heavens above. In 1962, the United States, the eagle was put on the endangered species list as American farmers were spraying pesticides. The eagles began to die rapidly, declining in numbers. It was a federal law that Native Americans were not allowed to practice religious ceremonies freely and could be prosecuted by these laws. Historically, tens of millions of North American Indians through the 19th century, but by 1900, the dawn of the 20th century, noted and documented by the U.S. Federal Government Army, there were less than 237,000 Native Americans left in the United States. After 1871, all Native Americans were officially noted as prisoners of war. They were not allowed to leave reservations freely, although over 12,000 Native Americans served in World War I in 1917. American Indians and prisoners of war were not allowed to leave reservations freely or become citizens of the United States until after the year 1924. Historically, the Choctaw co-talkers of World War I, the Dene Navajo co-talkers of World War II, American Indians and veterans of war were not allowed to truly legally vote in all 50 states until after the year 1965. American Indians fought for civil and religious rights up until the year 1978. The ban on eagle feathers and religious gatherings was finally lifted by President Jimmy Carter, who passed the Freedom of Religious Act only for American Indians. Today, in order to carry the feathers that you are viewing here today legally, you must be a true-blooded tribal member documented from reservation enrollment to carry them legally in the United States, First Nation Canadian, and Alaska Natives. The feathers you are viewing, these come from a golden eagle. Again, everyone, my name is Gary Whiskey. I'm a yuk. I'm an enrolled tribal member of the Perry Band Potawatomi Nation of Maida, Kansas. It is estimated today the U.S. population, around 2% of the U.S. population are American Indians. Historically, Indian reservations were documented in a jail system. There is approximately 567 federal tribes in my nation. We are around 4,600 enrollment through the nation of Kansas and the Prairie Band Reserve. I'm one of 187 of us that own homes here in California today. If you would like to look into our family a little bit more, you can look our family up in a very small documentary under Sundance, also through National Geographics under our family's name, Smoke That Travels. All of you out there, please be very, very proud of who you are. All of you come from very beautiful cultures and backgrounds from around the world. Today we make up this country, carrying every single beautiful culture from around the world. We all live here together as a family. Never carry hatred in your hearts and please, Teach all the children of the future love, respect, and compassion to everyone they come across around the world. We all live under the same sun, moon, and stars above our head. We're all a family upon this earth and should be respectful to each other, this world that we all share. To all of our veterans out there, those men and women that have served in battle, thank you all so much for everything you've ever done for us. As American Indians, our old ones, believe in the modern day warrior psychologically physically and mentally they are our modern day warriors when you meet a veteran please extend your hand shake your hand shake their hand and thank them for everything that they've ever done for us our old people understand that through warrior societies when you see our people there's a lot of arguments and fighting about the headdresses right now on the internet a lot of people think it's just a flashy thing to put upon the head but when you meet a veteran you'll understand that in war you're fighting your enemy, you touch your enemy, you take their lives in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you take their weapons. These people have been through things that most of us can never imagine. So those headdresses that our people wore, every single feather upon the body represented something in war and battle. So these things were not to be taken lightly. They're like a Marine, a soldier in battle, badges upon the body. So when our people see other people wearing them for Instagram or Facebook and they just want to do it for a nice picture, that's really not appropriate in our old ways. But again, these veterans, when you see them, you'll understand that they are true, true warriors. When you meet a veteran, please extend your hand, honor them, shake their hand, and honor them for everything they've ever done for us. To you and your families out there, thank you so much for everything you've ever done. To you out there, everyone, please have a great, wonderful night with your families here at Knott's Berry Farm. Thank you.